It isn't often that a movie will touch on the subjects such as prejudice and discrimination, let alone a movie geared towards children. Well, Disney hit the mark almost perfectly with the movie Zootopia. Officer Judy Hopps is a remarkably inspirational character that shows kids, despite being judged by the way she looks, she can achieve anything. Busting down those barriers put up by society can be hard, but if we come together and do what we know is right, we can become who we want to be. Officer Hopps and her new companion Nick, the sly and cunning fox, find themselves in the center of a citywide conspiracy. Through the unraveling of this conspiracy, Zootopia does a fantastic job at representing both sides of the story. We get a glimpse into the lives of the little person, represented by Bellwether in this case, and how hard it is for the prey to be heard. And on the other hand, Zootopia gives a fantastic representation of how society expects others to behave in a negative way, based on how they look and their DNA, as represented by the predators. The city of Zootopia is the place that predator and prey can coexist safely and liberally, and no one can argue with the fact that it is a fantastic movie. But one thing people fail to question is, how the perfect city was created in the first place. Nothing starts out perfect, as they say, and as it would turn out. The origins of Zootopia come from a much darker place, with some of the old rules and regulations still lingering about the city in an attempt to keep it seemingly perfect and pristine. Now, before we go into further detail, if you're a fan of all things Disney and Pixar, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button to ensure you don't miss any of our magical uploads. Alright, right off the bat, it is pretty obvious that Zootopia is a socialist society. In fact, comparing it to another film, Sing, that is also centered around anthropomorphic animals living day-to-day -day lives, we see that there are some major differences in the simple structure of the economy. Sing takes place in a capitalist society and Zootopia is centered in a socialist one. Looking at the animals and physical structures in Sing, society seems to be a safe place for everybody, just like Zootopia. However, it doesn't seem to cater to everyone or help everybody out. Everything is built similarly to human-sized, meaning the steps are still rather large for some of the smaller animals and door handles aren't as accessible. The larger animals that are closer to the size of humans can function just as fine, but the smaller animals have a harder time navigating the physical structures. And even the larger theme of the movie gives you that capitalistic feeling that the only way to get ahead is by somehow making a name for yourself and getting money. Though it is a civil place, it is still a dog-eat-dog -dog world, so to speak. Whereas with Zootopia, it's clear that it is a society built in a way to make sure that everyone who lives in it has the same opportunities and privileges. Even the way they structure the place indicates that it is focused on ease and convenience for all, despite the drastic shape and size of its citizens. We see this in how they even designed an entire section of the city to accommodate the size of rodents and smaller creatures. And yes, you still need money to survive, but getting that money seems a bit easier. And if not easier, at least more accessible to everybody in one way or another, regardless of one shape or size. It makes Utopia seem almost perfect when you look at it from the outside, but it definitely wasn't always that way. In fact, the creation of Zootopia is believed to take place in the same film universe as Disney's Robin Hood and as The Lion King, all taking place at different points in time, but all a part of the same timeline. A timeline where somehow a great place had been formed between Predator and Prey, allowing the two to begin living together in somewhat harmony. Disney's Lion King is the first stop on our timeline. It took place many years before Zootopia and Robin Hood, during a more primal era, a time where the animals were still living off the land and were a direct part of the circle of life. Despite its more primitive structure, it was also the start of the concept of living peacefully with each other, which is part of what led up to the Pride Lands where all creatures lived in harmony and in balance. Ever since then, the idea only continued to grow. As we fast forward in time and progress to the time that Disney's Robin Hood took place, animals had now evolved a bit more and become mostly bipedal, meaning they began to walk upright. This time period would be the equivalent of our medieval era, Peace had been more solidified in terms of the animals living among one another without fear of the predators. However, there was still a very apparent caste system in place that led a few animals into positions of wealth and power, while the majority were left in the slums with hardly enough food to feed their people. Now, let's take one more jump in time to the period that Zootopia took place, which is as close to the present time as we have seen, perhaps even a bit further in the future, where animals have transitioned to a life of full-time jobs and leisure living. They have designed large metropolitan cities with different neighborhoods and boroughs that are set up based on the species of animals that inhabits them. But wait, one thing to point out is the fact that there are absolutely no domestic animals in the Zootopia universe. There are no domesticated cats or dogs of any nature, which is odd when it comes to the idea of peaceful harmony amongst all. 
And that is because it is theorized that somewhere along the line, probably between Robin Hood and Zootopia, was a time of nightmare for the animals. It was at this time that humans had still existed on Earth, and in fact, had begun to domesticate animals, which as we see from the films, are more like humans than animals. Many of the species were able to resist domestication, but there were two that fell victim to the human's call, the cats and the dogs. This reign of terror lasted for a while, but eventually a calling occurred in what can only be described as a revolution. The animals stood up to man in what was called the Great Purge. Many battles ensued between mankind and the rest of the animal kingdom, and it wasn't long before the humans were unmatched and lost. In order to make sure that they could never try to enslave the animals again, they were wiped from existence, as well as any of their domesticated animals, in what was considered to be a cleansing of sorts. This left only the animals to sit in the mess that they have made, and try their best to pick up the pieces, which ultimately led to the idea of Zootopia. However, being built from the ground up meant that it wasn't going to be pretty at first. And this is where we get into the laws and regulations surrounding the creation of Zootopia in the Utopia we see it as in the film. You see, in order for the world to remain full of food for all who inhabit it, while also maintaining a balance of peace and order where predator and prey could live together, there would have to be some sort of population control. Think about it. When Judy was talking about her family and about the fact that her parents have 275 children, sure, it was a good laugh, but the implications of such number are insurmountable. In nature, that number would be regulated by natural selection. Some bunnies would survive, while others would become food for something bigger and scarier. But in the setting of Zootopia, that can't be the case. The predators don't go after prey anymore, which only means one of two things. One being that Zootopia is suffering from a seriously grotesque issue of overpopulation, which doesn't appear to be the case seeing how there is no concern about a food shortage of any kind, or any other issue that could possibly come from overpopulation, leading a lot of fans to believe option number two, which is a little darker than overpopulation. What Zootopia probably enforces is a certain kind of population control, Rules and regulations set in place to maintain the number of animals on the planet to ensure that everyone could afford to eat while keeping the Earth alive to sustain life for years to come. Probably rules for both predator and prey to limit the number of offspring they could have, similar to the one-child policy that was implemented in China. Sustainable life may sound nice, but there is a sinister side to it too. Like, what happens if the population rises to too high of a number or a family accidentally has too many children? Well, the answer is pretty sick. The lightest way to put it would be that a lot of unexpected children would disappear, similar to the disappearance of predators in the film, a conspiracy that has yet to be discovered within the system. <laughs> now that's messed up. And to wrap all this up, when looking at it from the outside, with little to no context, Zootopia does seem perfect. It looks amazing actually. All the animals seem happy and able to live their best lives. They aren't constantly looking over their shoulders or worrying about being eaten. It really does seem peaceful. But you know what it also seems like? It seems like it's expensive. I mean, living in Zootopia must cost a ton, especially when looking at some of the salaries that the characters make. Take Nick Wilde, for instance. When he was talking to Officer Hops about the sales he made on his little popsicle scheme, we learned that he made about $200 a day. He also mentioned that he is a hard worker and works seven days a week, 365 days a year. When you do some math, that adds up to a yearly income of 72 grand, which sounds like a good amount of money. So why was he living under a bridge? Why would someone who makes $72,000 a year essentially be homeless? Some speculate that it's more of a choice for him, but the more logical reasoning would be that he's poor or the citizens have some serious taxes to sustain the system without trying to get too political here. It leads us to think that despite making all that money, Nick still somehow couldn't afford the deposits and the rent up front, and therefore he chose to stay under that bridge, which would imply that Zootopia housing prices must be through the roof. Even Officer Hops, a police officer, can't afford a nice place. She rented out what looked like a studio apartment with really thin walls. And if that is the best she could afford, that's crazy. I mean, a police officer in Zootopia would probably make a pretty decent amount. If her apartment really is the best she could afford, it must mean that the place costs at least a couple grand a month, plus the cost of food and utilities. Almost every Disney film in existence has found itself spawning countless theories about the worlds they take place in, and in some cases, those theories are darker than others. Zootopia is a truly great film that teaches kids the importance of understanding a person's hardships and that it is never okay to judge someone based on their appearance or their lineage. But sometimes, in order to come to such a utopian point in society, things need to get a little darker before they can shine bright. What do you think? 
Is Zootopia a depiction of a socialist economy? Be sure to let us know. That's all Disney fans, let us know what you thought of this video in the comments. And like and subscribe for more magically packed videos.